Anise, can you hear me? I can't hear you. Yo, yo, uh, what you call her? Yes, I had my computer on mute. Hey, Josh. <laughs> What's up? I guess it's we back again, huh? <laughs> uh, the people don't put us down. <laughs> they, 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 they flaking on me, man. They flaking. Nah. I talked to uh, Tay. He said he'll do the next one. Mm -hmm. But I don't know where Nosh at. But whatever. Two's a crowd. Turn up. So did you read? I did. I, I got to fix my hair because you be recording. <laughs> <laughs> It's already too late. <laughs> when you come in, when you come in here, it's already live and living color. You gotta give up. Okay, so I'm gonna be ready next time. I'm gonna put on my makeup. <laughs> you was already planning makeup. That was last night. Yeah, okay. Folks be stunned, y'all. She's stunned. Anyway, I don't think nobody else coming, so we can jump right into this joint. Uh, okay. you read chapter three. Oh, yeah, cool. So remember, I told you we was gonna do chapter four, but I looked at chapter four. Chapter four, a beast. Okay. Well, yeah. when I saw the questions, I was like, okay, I yeah, hadn't just, gotten to chapter four. No, no, no. So we'll we'll probably do chapter four like Monday because I think it's it's like sixty pages in that chapter. That's a textbook. <laughs> That's a textbook chapter. Oh so, Lord. Like so, oh Lord. Let me pull up my questions and we can get the answer. That's what I'm pulling up. I screenshot them. I thought I screenshot. No, I saved them. Right Where are they at? Oh, there they go. There we go. Let me see that. Boom. I got my book ready. Okay. Right, cool. We're good. We're good. So, this is Welcome to the Book Club meeting. Nice to see you again. This thing don't stop. Nice to see you again. How's life treating you? It is great. Still enjoying being off. What about you? Um, it is great. Um, I can't complain as well. Um, I've started to find myself in front of the computer a lot more. But, mm -hmm. like, seriously, like, I leave it do a video, upload it, come back, research this, do a video, uh, and I'm like, oh my God. But, you having to work from home? Uh, no. Nah. Oh, you lucky. Yeah. So. I've been working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm just chilling. So, hey. let's do it. Okay. All right, so chapter three was entitled The Spirit of the Womb, mm -hmm. and Question one is, what is the tool women should possess to help with the navigation day in and day, I mean day out, when in conversation, meditation, or prayer, with or over their womb? The sacred womb journal. Look at her. Look at her. Which, I must say, I think everybody should journal. Everybody needs a chance to kind of get their thoughts out. And then it's always refreshing to be able to go back and see um, the growth in your thoughts and the growth in yourself over years. So I don't call my journal the sacred womb journal, mm -hmm. but I definitely journal. <laughs> right. But um, my wife, she she got me a journal and of course I'm a man, so I thought it was corny, but it was for like manifesting and all this good stuff. But um Nevertheless, I, I do like it for it can tell me where I was thinking, what's my headspace. Mm -hmm. And I actually met this guy who came into my job not too long ago. We was talking and he was into architecture. He was like, you need to go back to school. And I'm like, I ain't look, man. But he was like, man, you need to at least have a journal to when you get your thoughts. You need to write it down. And mm -hmm. so journaling is a big thing to keep us on track. So, yeah, that's an everyday life. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, I, think, I think in the first paragraph, she said, um, it may hurt a little bit, but it's going to be all right. Um, I think 
as I've been going through this journey that I've been going through between with this past year, and I won't say I've been going through like this sacred womb journey, but just mm-hmm. the journey of just becoming our niece, um, something that I've learned when it comes to like healing and, and becoming a better you, people don't realize how messy it is and how much it hurts. And I remember when I first started journaling, I was usually crying while I was writing. And, but over time, everything's all right. Like I just write now and there's no issue, but I highlighted that in the book because it made me think about like, it is gonna be all right. Like that's the push that I think we need to let people see. Cause I know so many women that suppress what they're going through because they don't want to feel or we're taught to believe that crying and showing emotion is weak. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's cleansing. So I enjoyed this chapter. So this yeah, this chapter was good. <laughs> so it says, when there is a disconnect of the wound from the woman, what is a side effect? So from my understanding, when there's a disconnect, there's it sounds like she was saying like cancer, hysterectomy, pain, um, mm-hmm. just all kinds of issues that you would have. Um with your reproductive system now in a sense i agree because um i had an aunt who lived her life straight and she ended up dying very early from ovarian cancer and the doctors told us that he did not we didn't have a family history of it that the only thing he could say led to her cancer was stress now, I don't think it's necessarily your womb. I think it's just your body. Whenever there's a disconnect, you're going to feel it in your entire body. So, I I I oh, oh, no, I was just saying I agree. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I highlighted this one part. The little capture I got from her was when we are not, yours is a great answer as well, which is actually correct. But she was like, when we are disconnected from our wombs, for whatever reasons, that we are not fully able to have an intimate interchange with another. And that goes, I feel like that goes mm-hmm. for men too, though. She say womb, as far as men, if we're not connected with our spirituality, if we're not connected or grounded, mm-hmm. then us trying to love a woman, it just gets tied up too. And uh, it's a mess. Mm-hmm. So I, I saw that reciprocating through both, you know, male and female. You're right. Oops, I'm turn the page. You're absolutely right. I think when I think about people that you see, you know, they're saying hurting people hurt other people. Right. Like this is just that, like you cannot have a healthy interchange with anyone if you have some kind of disconnect going on in your spirit. Let me highlight that. <laughs> so okay. Moving along, we says, what does Queen of Fool refer to as a medicine? Do you agree? Why or why not? Dog, I forgot the answer. Um, was it meditation? Uh-uh. Tell me when you're ready. You you tell me the answer. <laughs> All right, so the answer is, it was actually a page after what we just read. She was like, your story is your medicine. So it was kind of referring mm-hmm. to her journaling and telling, like speaking that truth. So like how yeah. you said, you know, you get when we, when we start living in truth and humility, like stop being afraid to express our emotions, like it it eases up on you. Like you like you said, yeah. writing and stuff, like, you know, I know it ain't as hard as it used to be, but eventually you learn how to let go and forgive, I guess. Yeah. Because um, I think she went on. She went on to start telling some people stories, and I found myself tearing up. <laughs> yeah, I, I read some of them, but I was like, I was kind of scared because I was like, should I read these? But I read them, and I'm like, dang. Like, uh-huh. it was very tough to hear, like, a woman say, like, her mom didn't teach her about, like, her situation. And I'm like, dang, that's, that's tough, man. Mm-hmm. That's tough, man. And it's just like, huh, here go a box of um, lady products and figured out <laughs> but there's there's a lot of um realities for so many women i think society especially like male society male yeah our male run society have taught women that our bodies are 
stuff is wrong with it and it needs to be fixed. And people start to feel very shameful of something as natural as menstruation. And mm. so um, I've heard lots of stories of African-American women and what their conversations were with like the talk and dating and there's definitely a need for this and those what do we call what were they called yesterday the group of women what did she call them Sacred Sacred women. Women. those are very necessary because if you are not able to share you're not able to get the help that you need true cool so the next one is define what does consistency mean to you um that means to me personally, I'll go first and just like stand on track. Um, you know, if you got you got a goal, you're edging towards that goal because you're constantly working towards it. Mm -hmm. um, it asks if you feel like you failed at consistency, what was your following actions? Um, if I feel like I was inconsistent, um, I ain't gonna lie, I'll be honest at this point. If I was inconsistent, I usually go into my head and be like, is it really that important? And most of the time, I'll be able to talk myself out of, like, it's not that important, whatever. And I throw whatever task it is by wayside. And that's me being, um, practicing humility and being honest. So, yeah, my following actions were trash. <laughs> <laughs> I think when I think about consistency, the word I think of is ritual. And mm -hmm. so it's like constantly doing something. But I also want to add with consistency, um, like how you do it. So when I think about um, me spending time with my, my devotional reading, my Bible, um, I won't say that it's consistent because, yes, I do read it every day. But some days my mind may be on something else. So like I'm calling the words out to the Bible. I'm not really putting it in my heart so I think I'm consistent in some areas but I'm inconsistent in others and I think it's um based on what's important to me or sometimes like my own fears like there are things that I want to do in life but I may be too scared to devote energy to that portion of my life to be consistent because I'm afraid of what the outcome will be or if I'll fail mm -hmm. so um I definitely think there are some times where I could be more consistent um, can I recall a time where I was the most consistent? I'm going to say around this time last year, I was like the most consistent in taking care of my health and in taking care of like who I am, like Ernie's, my spirit, spirituality, the spirit of Ernie's. And um, I did it. Like I noticed the improvement in my skin. My hair was growing. I was happy. I was thriving out here. Um, but I think life happens when I had to return back to work because we were getting ready for summer break. That yeah. consistency went away because I got a million other tasks to do. Right. And giving myself a facial at night may not be important. <laughs> but I like to hear she says, however, if you miss a day, it was pertaining to your sacred womb journal work. Mm -hmm. But she was like, if you miss a day or a week of your sacred womb journal work, it's okay. So I was kind of like, with that question, it's kind of to let everybody know, like, you know, sometimes we fall off that horse. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we fall off that bike. Uh, get back up, bro. Try again. Get back mm -hmm. up. Like, it's okay. We can jump back on it. Sometimes we fall out of our workout routines. Um, eat, your, eat your cookies, but know that you got to <laughs> stop eating them cookies a week from now. Give <laughs> nah. yourself some grace yeah, to yeah, make yeah, mistakes. Yeah. We're humans. We're humans. It's, on, it's the inevitable. Like, we can't run from mistakes. Uh, mm -hmm. mistakes make us better actually so number five is how often do you self-reflect and once you finish reflecting how do you feel afterwards i probably reflect too much mm -hmm. <laughs> um i was just talking to a friend earlier today about me self-reflecting about some stuff and she was like no i think at this point you're taking it personal <laughs> so sometimes depending on if i can get peace from it um, I do feel a lot better. I feel relieved. I feel like growth can happen because sometimes in situations you got to take a step back and you got to look at what role you play. You know, like if I got into an argument with you and I'm only stuck on what Josh did and don't get stuck on my role in it, 
then I'll never grow and I'll never get better because I don't know what my flaw is and what I need to work on. Mm. Mm. Me personally, mm -hmm. self-reflection. I say I self-reflect at least at least once a week, mm -hmm. twice a week, most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and once I once I finish it, and when I self-reflect, that means me writing down my thoughts and what's going on because mm -hmm. if i don't this up here the brain it just turns and turns but mm -hmm. i do feel like how you said i do feel a sense of relief and it kind of like regrounds me which i need i think i need to do more self-reflecting mm -hmm. uh, because i have a million ideas and i feel like i'm a i'm a hmm. my wife will say it my wife didn't tell me my mom didn't tell me it's like I'm a mat. I try to master everything, and I can get it to a point, but then I'm on to the next. So I feel mm -hmm. like that's my downfall. But with self reflection, if I can do it more often, then I could probably really, you know, take over the world. No, no. Not right now. <laughs> nah. So the next one was yeah. This is a question just to see if you was reading. It is, what is the physical womb defined as? Okay, that's the uterus. Oh, good job. Open. There we go. Um, I don't remember now. When I saw layers, I didn't remember seeing layers. Okay, so it says, how many layers are there? It was... I think three. It was, yep. It's what three. The innermost layer, the endometrium, and the the myometrium, myometrium, mm -hmm. and the parametrium. Great. That's and the last one was how many parts of the womb are there? And what are they? Gosh, really, Josh? It's the uterus. I, uh, I'll do that one. Since, <laughs> since you did the last one. I'll do. The uterus also has two parts, a body and a cervix. OK. <laughs> So yeah, that was just my, that's my question to make sure people can read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew, <laughs> I knew where to go to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you found it quick, so I can look quick. <laughs> so next question is, do you like water? Yeah, I had some questions about this one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> do you like water? Yeah, like I like water. Like? It tastes good. <laughs> Okay. I, and then when I, uh, so I think about water and how it tastes good, you know, drinking water. But then I also think about um, the beach, you know, and it's so calming. It's been a minute since I've been to the beach, but mm -hmm. um, a lot of people like to go where you can um, just let things go. When I think about being a Christian, um, I think about baptism and how cleansing water is. And so when you're baptized, you're dipped in the water and you're essentially like cleansed of the old you. And so um, water is so cleansing, it's just beautiful, but I, water can be deadly too. So, but that's just a side note, but you go so, ahead. <laughs> so this question, it was mostly for the women uh, mm -hmm. because, and I'm gonna tell you why I formulated this question. Because okay. when I talk to my mom, like you just said, when I talk to my mom, I talked to my uh, wife, like you just said. I, she was really uh, honing in on like being cleansed by water, like a body of water. And women are connected to water. And just like you stated, you like the beach and you was like, oh, it's so soothing. It's so cool. So this was really to try and dive into, you know, like me personally, if I had to I will, if you ask my wife, she say, "Well, I like to stay by a body of water." Me personally, I'm like, "No, I like <laughs> to stay more like country trees. I like to see trees and greenery, but mm -hmm. it's like I feel like women, y'all do have like a connectivity to water because it's like even when y'all shower, like I got a little my little sister stayed. I found when we was younger, you kind of like, "Hey, dude, why are you staying in the tub so much?" She would just just go take a bath. Like mm -hmm. you just took a bath like three hours ago. And like I'm like that. Yeah, and like women would like literally be like taking the hottest showers and we think like what the and y'all take mm -hmm. the longest showers and it's like 
It's so relaxing. Yeah, so I feel like <laughs> water is very deep with y'all. And I really learned that in this chapter. I was like, oh, water. I guess water helps these ladies, man. So she said, drink a glass of water. Hey, drink a glass of water and get you right. <laughs> But I was thinking about like just when I have a bad day, just that standing under the water, you feel like it's just rinsing all of your troubles away. Like when you're taking your shower. So, I mean, y'all missing out. <laughs> y'all missing out. So it says, when you stress out, what do you tend to do to cope with the stresses of the world? Is this fix temporary or permanent? Are you healing or hurting yourself more? I do so many things when I stress. So one thing I have known, learned about myself is that I am not an internal person. I'm a firm believer of talking and getting things off of your chest um, in the correct way. Um, if it's work stress, like I'm at work and the children working my nerves, you're probably going to catch me eating some chocolate or something. But if it's just like life stress, I do tend to, I'm a firm believer in therapy. So I do tend tend to make an appointment for my therapist or oh, I will cool. journal or I'll pray or I'll read the Bible or I'll listen to a sermon. Um, when I was younger, I used to listen to music and cry it out. I don't do that as much. Um, because now being adult, an adult and having so many different pressures, it's different from the pressures I thought I was having in college. But with the pressures that I'm having as an adult, like I need something of more substance. Mm -hmm. So um, I usually dive into my word, dive into therapy. Um, I try not to eat unless I'm at work, but hey, because I can't go cry with a classroom with 35 children. <laughs> right. So it'd be like, go go take this dollar, go to the vending machine and bring me a Snickers <laughs> and a Coke. <laughs> to me personally, um, this was like, this, this question was kind of like dealing with uh, just trying to deal with and cope with some of the stresses of the world and some of the mm -hmm. stuff that hurts us. Um, me personally, yeah, I'm just saying I started a snack or then, you know, if you really dress, you try and, you know, inebriate, drink a little bit or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's like, man, to be honest, like, that ain't no, that's a temporary fix. Mm -hmm. The problem is still there and it's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not healing myself, I'm hurting myself. And the biggest thing I couldn't do, I, like like how you said a therapist, is like um, if therapy was the answer for me, I could see that, but I could talk it out. A lot of times as a man, I know from a man point of view, it's like if somebody do some effed up or messed up to you, I'm more so like, yo, I, I'm going to internalize it. But it's like you can't internalize it. And it's like we usually internalize it as men because we like, yo, I don't want to be offensive. and I don't want it worse to worse, come to worse, we come to blows, but it's like sometimes just speak it out. And you ain't got to come to blows necessarily, but just speak it out so it can be out there in the open. And, you know what I'm saying? I don't go home and be like, whatever, man. It's just stress of the world and I'm just going to drink it. You know, turn up. Mm -hmm. So, so do, you, do you think you'd ever do therapy? Um, I think I could do it. I'm, I'm open to it. Um, I have done it before. I did it at Austin P while I was going to Austin P in college. Uh, okay. And it was pretty, it was refreshing. Um, it was actually funny. It was a bad, why I was going in there was for some other reason, just to be an, an a-hole for a situation that happened. But I ended up just like expressing myself and like opening up to the therapist. And I was like, this is some cool stuff. Like, I should have I should have went back, but hey. I guess I asked that because I know the purpose of this book is uh, you know, about the woman. But I remember one day talking to my um therapist about all of the different programs that they have for black women in therapy, like therapy for black girls and black girls heal are two examples. And um I was telling her like what what does it look like for black men? And we were just talking about how a lot of African American men do not go to therapy and I know some African American men that I'm like you would really benefit from therapy like this happening to you as a child is not okay like you gotta talk to somebody about it so I was curious to see like what was your thoughts on it yeah I, I'm not I'm not opposed to it um even reading this book 
I get jealous at times reading this book because I'm like, dang, I'm reading all this for the woman. What about me? So that's why I'm like, I really got to make some of it make sense for me too. So that's why I really be diving deep in some of these questions. Okay. All right. So next question is, when you were younger, did you ever happen to come across a feather? What did you do when you found it? And what is the feather symbolic of? Okay. So I'm going to tell you, I could not... And I probably skipped over what the feather is symbolic of because I was so deep in thinking about did I come across a feather? I mean, I think I may have saw a feather from a bird or something in the street, but I grew up in Memphis. So it didn't make me be like, let me touch this feather. Like I'm thinking, ooh, ugh, you know, like just some ringworms or something on this feather. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, when I think of... So I want, tell me what a feather is symbolic of. And I think I kind of got a thought about something. So the ele the, it's, it's the element of air, the feather. It's just okay. lightness, lightness and air and just. Because it made me think about Forrest Gump. Uh-huh. You know how that feather. <laughs> and I was like, what does that mean? Freedom? Okay. So lightness. Okay. So, so we want to be light as a feather? You want to, um, and then she talks about a heavy heart, and she was like, is yeah. she was like, don't go around with a heavy heart. So it's kind of like releasing some of that pain. That if the, if the heart is heavy, mm -hmm. once you meditate and release, you should be light as a feather, you should be free flowing. Ah, uh, um, I like that. So, yeah, that's when when I was younger, I had found a feather, and you kind of stick it on the side of your head. But, uh, uh. hey, man. <laughs> But yeah, that was that was what I did yeah. when I found feathers. I really like that because life has so many things that weigh on you and weigh on your heart. And you know, the Bible says, guard your heart because the issues of life flow from you. And if you have a heavy heart, everything that comes out of you will be heaviness, despair, negativity. And so when you start journaling and releasing some of this stuff, you can only release positivity, happiness, love. I like that. That made me feel warm on the inside for some reason. Nope, 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 nope. So we got one more question. Now we flew through this. Yeah, we did. Uh, I got to make sure I can find the answer. <laughs> okay, I thought she said drink some water. Hold on, well, wait. So it says, I'm going to just ask the question. So it's if one is, experience heavy, ex is experiencing heavy bleeding, what recommendation is made to I drink? I thought she said drink some water. Because um, I remember thinking, what? I don't know if your pages is numbered the same as mine. Look on page 60. Five. Um, yeah, I don't think our pages are normally the same because I'm like in 95. <laughs> oh, dang. So it says, I'm going to read it. It says, drink sacred woman's herbal tonics in honor. Hey, how you doing? Uh-uh, 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 y'all could have been on what you call, don't. <laughs> nah, you about to, we about to be done. We on that last question. <laughs> well, so it says, drink sacred woman's, women's herbal tonics in honor of the womb. Uh, it says, choose the tonic according to your need. For example, if you have tumors, use gold enrod. If you have heavy bleeding, use shepherd's purse. And if your womb needs toning, use raspberry. If your womb needs strengthening, use dandelion. So when we talked yesterday, I was like, exactly. we was talking about the teas and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure most of these are offered in like tea form. Mm -hmm. So like, and like, that's what I was just trying to make sure some, some women kind of understand that instead of going to get pills, uh, she talked about birth control. Man, I highlighted that. Okay, but, so... Uh, here hey. is where the science, the scientists in me come out. Mm -hmm. So while I do agree, you you want to you want to exhaust the natural options first. Um, 
but you know, sometimes our doctors know what they're doing in certain situations. You know what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't reading this, like I wouldn't be like, okay, I'm finna just drink. They done diagnosed me with cancer, so I'm finna go drink some tea. Like mm-hmm. I'm a, you know, I'ma go listen to the medical advice, but then if we go back and our pages are different, and I think I'm kind of getting off topic. No, you but did. one thing that made me kind of tear up, I don't even know what page it was, but the lady was telling the story of her, I guess, getting ready to go to birth, get, you know, getting ready to go into birth and getting ready to go to... And what the doctor oh, did to her? Yes. And believe it or not, I don't want to say that his comment are like that or are are so normal but when they say that african-american women do not get the same treatment um when when birthing their children they they mean it um i have a very close friend when she gave birth she she struggled with high blood pressure and instead of the doctor being proactive he kept telling her to watch what she was to eat and watch um stop eating salt but it was other stuff that needed to be done and so she ended up having to go to the hospital because her her blood pressure had gotten so high and her mom had to go like start going out for somebody to come and she had to have an emergency c-section and she ended up having her child two months early now the baby is healthy beautiful but um i always imagine like my doctor is an african-american woman and i love her um, and I'm very strategic about picking African American doctors, doctors that look like me. And I always wonder how would things be different if she had a doctor who saw her and didn't see an African American unwed woman. Or mm-hmm. she, like I've read stories of women who one lady said she had swelled up so she couldn't wear her wedding ring and her husband was deployed, and the nurse refused to give her an epidural. Because and the nurse told her, you you're not allowed to have an epidural because you came in here unmarried. But the woman was married. She just didn't have on her ring because she her, she was swollen. She couldn't feed it no more. Right. And I just hear so many stories. When I read that, it kind of made me tear up. Mm. That's terrible. That's so like that's what that's what I'm saying with like that question. It's it's a recommendation. You know, so you can prevent, like, not everybody is going, not everybody got good doctors. So yeah. it's like, if we can learn, you know, and try and remedy some things, you never know what may work for your body. So it's like, yeah, before we put you in a situation to where you're on that table and they like, I don't care, Blackie, you know, try. You still use it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, try to expunge, try to exp- exalt all options. So yeah, they got recommendations. Everything got recommendations. So it's like, do your research. I urge women to do their research uh, because. Put it over there, please. <laughs> because, because uh, yeah, the human body is complex, and uh, I don't think even um, man medicine and doctors know everything about the human body. To be honest, so you are absolutely correct. If not, we have a cure for the coronavirus. <laughs> hey, I mean, you can drink some uh, Lysol. I think that's what <laughs> was recommended. But. And get an injection of bleach. <laughs> Put uh, a little sunlight on the inside of you. <laughs> man, just some radiation, you know, shoot some light. Man, let's stop. But, uh, yeah, that's it. We did this it. This was again. nice. Yay. So over the weekend, we're going to dive into chapter four. Like I said, chapter four is diesel. Okay. And it's like literally on mine is page 67 through 120. Okay, let me so. go to mine. On oh, mine is page 143. <laughs> yeah. So that's called the, the care, care of the womb. womb. Oh, this is going to be interesting. So that's going to open us up to some of the things we need to eat. So I'm I'm really ready for this, so. Uh yeah, but she hey, also. What's up? <laughs> we need some more women for this one. <laughs> I know. She well, said. Michi said please, she'll get. Please come, please. I don't get off too late. All right, so I 
the next ones might be a little bit later so we can get some more women involved. Okay, that's fine, because I'm at home. <laughs> Shut up, dude. <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah, I'm ready to see what she's I had my honeydew melon today and kiwi, so. I won't even lie to you. I had a catfish sandwich. Oh, my God. Why you say that? Mm-hmm. I'm regretting it. So on the bright side, I'm I'm very uncomfortable because I hadn't been eating fried food. Number one. Number two, this I put hot sauce on it and my chest is burning. Right. I'm about yeah. to go take something when this is over. Because <laughs> you ain't used to it no more. I'm miserable. See? I don't want to sweat. Let's go chapter four. I'm ready for it now. So y'all, I, I messed it up. I won't do that again. Yeah, but all righty. Well, that's it. I enjoyed this. Yes, ma'am. I'm putting it on YouTube again, so okay. Release my hair comb. <laughs> all right, lady. Yeah, I have a good one. You too. Bye, bye. Bye. Mm, how does it work? Oh. I got it. Yeah.